Hello, my name is Joel Coleman. I'm a sales engineer with Symantec. And the goal of this video is to give you a quick overview of the management console for the Symantec Endpoint Protection Cloud. As you can see, I'm already logged into the console here and I'm at the welcome page. This is what you'd see the first time when you log into the solution after setting it up. You'll notice this page is designed to give us a little bit of information about the console, get us briefly introduced to each of these tabs so that we can get started. You'll also notice up at the top we have this Get Started tab. If I click on that, this has some brief setup steps that we can go through to quickly get things configured and deployed. So we have things like evaluating security needs so that we can set up our security policies, configuring mobile device management, creating users, and enrolling devices. Also something worth noting is the link here to help. The overview I'll be giving today is very brief, but you can go to this help section once you have your login to the console, and there's quite a bit more of information in here as well as video tutorials that will give you uh, all you need to get set up and running with the solution. I'm going to go ahead and hide our getting started panel. And let's move on to the first tab. The dashboard tab is designed to give you a quick and easy way to assess the overall health and status of your environment. A lot of the items that I have on this page can be clicked on and they'll also lead to more additional information about the given item. So right at the top, you'll notice I have things that I would wanna be notified of quickly, things like compromised or at-risk devices, user behavior alerts, threat activity, and also the number of licenses that I have remaining. And if I click on the threat activity, for example, you'll notice that it brings up another page here with more detailed information about that given item. Below that, I have these four widgets. The first one is device status. This one is designed as a quick thumbs up or thumbs down for my given devices to show how many of them are a secure status, whereas others might need attention. And again, this is something that I can click on uh, to see more additional information about what clients those are. And I'm also given a reason here of why they might not have that secure status. Then I have next to that the operating system distribution. This allows me to see how many of my devices are on a given platform. So Windows, OS X, iOS, Android. And then also I can see a breakdown of what version of those platforms my clients are. So a nice summary overview of that. Below that, we have the threat activity. Uh, this graph is uh, really there to allow us to assess trends uh, within threat activity within the environment. So it can alert us to uh, if we're seeing rising numbers of threats being detected in the environment, and there might be some action items that I need to take to remediate that. And again, you can click on these for more detailed information. The last widget over on the bottom right here is the Endpoint Protection Cloud calendar. We This serves two functions. You'll notice right at the top, we have these news articles that are archived here. Uh, these articles are not things that pertain necessarily specifically to our environment, but really the uh, security landscape as a whole. So there are things that we might wanna be alerted about uh, to keep up with security news and, and things that uh, we might need to take a, a additional steps to harden the environment against. And then below that, we have a calendar that alerts us to when there are pending upgrades or maintenance windows within the, the service that you might need to be aware of and plan around. Next, let's take a look at the Alerts and Events tab. The Alerts and Events tab gives us a central place to view all of our important security alerts and events that have been generated by our Endpoint Protection Cloud clients. Uh, the alerts are things like malware outbreaks or scheduled maintenance or upgrades and license expirations, things that really affect the system as a whole. You'll notice down here I have some low risk items that were remediated threats on different endpoints. Then if we move over to events, these are things like individual security incidents, client configuration changes or errors on the clients. Again, if I scroll down, I can see the, the types of events these things would be, maybe some 
These are listed as high security just because of the types of threats that were caught. But then I can see the number of those events over time. I can also choose a time frame so that I can see more or less events for a specific time. And then I can also have different filters. So I can filter by how critical the events are, uh, what category they fall into, or again, what time period that I want to see those events for. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the next tab, which is the groups, users, and devices. The group section of this tab allows us to create and name groups that we can then divide our users and devices into. When we're choosing what users and devices to group together, we'd want to make sure that all of the users and devices in a group share the same security needs because the security policies that we'll be looking at in a minute are assigned by group. So any users and any devices that are in a group are going to share the same security settings and policies. The users section shows me a list of my users that have been enrolled in the service, as well as what type of account they have. So it shows whether their role is a user or an account administrator as well as what group that they're currently assigned to, so I know what security settings that, that user is going to receive. Also, if I click on one of my users, I have the ability to see all of the devices that are enrolled under that user. The last section is the device section. This shows me a list of all of my devices, regardless of what group or users they're currently assigned to. And again, if I click on these, I can get a little bit more detailed list of information about this particular device. Things like hardware, applications installed, and any alerts or events that might be applied to this particular device. I also have a few actions here, like fixing a security status, removing a device from the service, or transferring it to another user. Next, let's take a look at the Policies tab. You can see that the Policies tab is divided into three sections, System Policies, Security Policies, and Access Policies. Uh, system Policies just govern some of the general settings of the clients, like how often they update and whether they need to connect through a proxy. Security Policies, these are the settings that govern the security behavior. So things like scheduled scans, what scan technologies are turned on, uh, MDM settings as far as the password length and complexity, things of that nature. These settings are covered in more detail in the tutorial videos in the help section of the console. And then lastly, access policies. These enable you to set up access to email servers or wireless networks and have those settings applied to clients uh, that support those MDM functionalities so that the users don't have to then go themselves and try and configure settings for a corporate email server or for a corporate Wi-Fi service at a particular site. Next, we'll take a look at the Reports and Templates tab. This tab is divided into two sections. There's a Reports section. This shows us a list of uh, archive reports, any that we've created in the past, either manually or on demand, so that we can just click on one of these to easily pull up and view that information. Then we have the templates section. This is where you would actually create the template for a report that you'd want to schedule or run. You can generate the report on demand, or when you're setting it up, you can also set up a schedule frequency, how often you want that to be created automatically for you. You also notice that you can uh, filter, set your filters here, as well as set the format that you want the report to be generated in. And then you can also set up email recipients. So if you want this to be generated not just within the console, but you'd also like to receive it via email, you can add recipients to that list there and then save it. Next, let's take a look at the settings tab. The last tab in the console is the settings tab. This covers some of the advanced settings for the solution, uh, things that you would probably want to go through during your initial setup, things like setting up uh, email alerts and notifications or your initial subscription or uh, using a, an identity provider to enroll your 
your users in the service. Uh, these aren't things that we have time to go over in this video. However, you'll notice in the drop down up here, there is a help section. If you click on that, it'll take you to the knowledge base for the product here, where we have a lot of good getting started documents, as well as some video tutorials and more in-depth information about all of the sections that we discussed uh, during this video overview. So I hope you enjoyed this overview and it helped you to understand the solution a little bit better. Uh, if you think you're ready to learn more or to try a free trial, uh, see the uh, description section of the video for a link to the product page of Semantic Endpoint Protection Cloud, uh, where you can sign up for a free trial. Thank you for your time.